Hello, welcome to the eighth episode of the Gabriel Podcast. Hi guys, Future Gabriel here. I am inserting this mental health disclaimer. In this episode, we will talk about eating disorders. And to those that may be sensitive to this type of material, please proceed with caution. Okay, enjoy the episode. Today, I have my guest here, Elizabeth Lopez. Um, I'm very happy that she decided to come on today and share her story and her experiences um, to get her to this point. So, hello, Elizabeth. Hi, thank you for having me, Gabriel. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on here. So, uh, I guess a little bit on uh, like how this interview podcast episode came about. I was kind of just on Instagram. I was following um, the CSUB page, and she was highlighted as one of the uh, people to get into the um, the master's portion in the CSUB like nutrition program, and I just became really interested. I wanted to hear um, from as many people as I could from that side because I'm a nutrition undergrad graduate from Cal State Long Beach. I've always been interested in uh, their programs there for internships, so it was a. It, I thought it would be really cool to to hear from the people that got in so elizabeth here was one of the uh brave first people <laughs> to uh, c uh just immediately um you know accept my offer to come on here and she just had immediately just from the responses too, just very um uh you know just very energetic about it and and so i'm i'm really excited to to hear her story so so, Elizabeth, can you tell us a little bit on, I guess, maybe we can start off with the nutrition aspect. Um, how did your nutrition journey begin for you? Um, that's a very loaded question for me, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> particularly. So that's why I said, like, if you want twists and turns, if you want an exciting story, you've come <laughs> to the right place. Um, I didn't. I didn't really ever think I'd go into nutrition growing up or anything like that. I'd say like the moment when I kind of realized that was about uh, when I was 15. And the way that I realized that was a very um, strange story. But I, before that, I was just, you know, I kind of actually started, I wanted to be a billion things. If you would have asked me when I was little, I wanted to be like everything, even from like a bus driver to a veterinarian, like everything. Uh -huh. I wanted to be everything. <laughs> and then uh, eventually, like, I think during, um, I went to like a science camp, like, you know, in magnet or something like that. Like they sent us to a science camp and um, literally everyone wanted to go into engineering, robotics, like biology, just, you know, marine biology. I was the only one who like, one of the few people who signed up for like criminology. So <laughs> that I wanted to do that um, up until I was 15. And then when I was 15, and you can probably like put a disclaimer through here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking a little bit about mental health and about, um, you know, just my experience through that. So like, if anything might trigger anyone, this would mm -hmm. be the time to, you know, like make a timestamp or something. But um, yes, so I began struggling with uh, what I didn't know would be my eating disorder at, um, I would say age, when I was like in sixth grade, I forget what, how, what age that is, like 12 or 11. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so when I was like about 11 or 12, I started to, you know, I guess, develop the the symptoms or start to do the behaviors and it just kind of progressed all throughout um middle school and then in high school is when it got really bad in 10th grade i was admitted to an eating disorder facility an inpatient eating disorder facility mm -hmm. and i stayed there for about a total of three months inpatient and then i progressed out like um i progressed out into outpatient for another three-ish months so it's about half a year um i was uh treated for an eating disorder and the dietitians there, um, the food science group, <laughs> that's what really made like the impact for me aside from all the other, you know, groups, but I think just being educated on things and being able to, you know, just have a better understanding about, um, how we utilize nutrients and how important they are for everything just kind of helped me, I guess, work through like the thoughts when I was, you know, it helped me work through understanding why we need it and that kind of helped me somehow <laughs> you know overcome my eating disorder um so yeah that's kind of like the long-winded explanation i did end up relapsing again and we can go back into that later if you want to but that's like the the short answer of of how i got into or developed i guess a passion for nutrition okay wow yeah that um 
that's definitely something it seems like very um you know very like very personal like you know experience when it comes to nutrition and definitely um you know hearing that the dietitians in that um i guess eating disorder um facility to to be able to help you and through that kind of situation i think that's that's really cool because um i guess that's yeah like dietitians are just you, you don't exactly uh at least when i i guess you kind of came across dietitians as well like i never exactly knew about dietitians like for a very long time you know right, I, right. it's not something that you know about it's like no one really thinks about that career even existing when you're like going through school I just like stumbled upon it and I was like, yo, this is what I want to do when I get out of here. Like, this is what I want to do when I get, I already knew since 10th grade, I was like, I'm going to apply to all the programs in California that have a, uh, I went on the eat right website. That's mm -hmm. how I looked at, you know, that's how I came upon it. And I was like, okay, which ones have the didactic program? And then, so just shot all my applications out there and got into Berkeley somehow. Um, but yeah, so that, that's what I ended up doing. Um, but yeah, same. I had no idea what it was until I went into that facility. I didn't know what a dietitian was. And then I realized like these people change people's lives. At least they changed mine. And so I wanted to do the same for people in the future. Okay. And so do you like have like, are, did you also want, is your aim to also be like an eating disorder dietitian as well? Um, so yes, but I also want to be able to, you know, I want to work in a lot of different areas, which is why I'm really excited for the ISVP internship program, um, is that I'll be able to, you know, expand my horizons and, you know, be able to um, gain experience and uh, with other populations in other disease states as well. So I, I currently work as a diet aide at actually the same company. <laughs> I ended up going full circle and working at the same company. Um, but, uh, I work as a diet aide there right now. I'll, I'll be leaving in August once, you know, school and the internships start, but, um, definitely a very rewarding, um, population to work with just to see them progress and, you know, just to see that like sw uh, switch flip in their mind slowly is just incredible. So I would love to continue to work, you know, with that, uh, with eating disorders. Okay. That's, that's really cool. Uh, I guess my one question with the eating disorder, um, like dietitian, I guess, you know, I, I've been slight, I haven't had like a direct experience with, um, I guess the eating disorder, um, population, but I've always been interested because I, I've specifically been very interested in like psychology and they've always mentioned, um, like, you know, being an eating disorder, you get to see a lot of, you know, psychology in the eating disorder um uh, dietitian pathway did you see like do you see like a lot of psychology being mixed into that um oh yes 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 oftentimes you know i'm not um you'll just you'll just see a lot of uh patients especially um when you're not working with like peds or adolescents uh mm -hmm. more in the adult age you'll tend to see that most uh adults that still have their eating disorders one were never treated for it as an adolescent i was treated as an adolescent um mm -hmm. but definitely in the adult population you will see a cross between uh other mental health um you know conditions or diseases so you you will definitely see that i've seen that um and it's definitely a lot harder for them because it gets tricky because right two two different um things coming into play now so having to treat both like the eating disorder and also you know, a slew of other things, whether it be uh, BPD or um, just, uh, I'm like blanking out on, on, on a lot that we see, but definitely it's it's usually just, you know, triggered and aggravated by, by trauma. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. So let me, okay. So let me try to back up a little bit, just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I, I the first point um, that you mentioned that really was interesting a little bit was when you were younger, you had a, a bunch of different interests. Um, so would you mind like sharing like where around what area like you grew up in, in, in California? Oh yeah. So I was born and raised in Southern California. I, um, 
I actually jumped around a lot from when I was in elementary school. I mm. went to two different elementary schools. Um, started off at, uh, but both in the Gardena area. So like Torrance, Gardena, around there, South Bay. Mm. Um, I started at 135th Street School and then went to Gardena Middle, not Middle School, Gardena Elementary School, then back to 135th Street School, kind of just following my sister around because it was wherever, well, pretty much we moved closer to like, you know, the, the, I guess what you would think as like the main Gardena area because she had to go to middle school there. So it was just like me literally jumping around because of that. So oh. just pretty much that area. Mm, I, I would have think that would be a little bit tough on you as a, as a kid kind of like bouncing or like kind of like jumping school a little bit like that yeah and it was it was funny because they would always like be like ah it's liz you know she'll be fine she makes friends everywhere but you know it's it's still taxing on a kid you know like just trying to the good thing is that you know pretty much all all of us <laughs> um that went to like like perry middle school that's where that's where i ended up going to mm -hmm. all went to the same high school so as long as you know like all your friend groups ended up going to the same high school so you know, it wasn't that bad but definitely it it did kind of make me feel like I was you know not like I was just uh, like kind of living under the shadow of my sister that's that's where a lot of like um my own personal like struggles with like you know mental health and also my eating disorder came from and especially there was just a lot of pressure from my older sister because she was very like um smart you know she was always like studying always reading i was more of the tomboy always trying to you know go around and play and i just i just didn't like reading like even then i, I would use khan academy like for biology and biochem like i just i was like i can't read this i need someone to like draw it for me like please <laughs> but uh yeah so and then my sister ended up getting into yale when i graduated like uh i forgot when she's like four years older than me so yeah like when i like got out of my second year no, my second, like 10th grade, basically when everything went down, like she got into Yale, she left and it was just like, I had to make a decision. Like, you know, do I want to kind of like follow in her footsteps type of thing? Um, I don't know. That's basically, you know, what kind of made me feel like I had to do something with my life. Mm. Are you mentioning kind of like the, or what was that a turning point for you to, in terms of what? In terms of like, um, because my first year of high school, I literally, I, I mean, I didn't have the worst grades, but I got a D in English, like for no reason, mm. just because like, again, I was struggling with my eating disorder that was developing and getting to its peak. I just was also like trying, trying to rebel, I guess, and just trying to be like, I don't have to be like my sister. Like I'm different. You know, I don't want to go to, I don't want to do, go to a fancy school type of thing. Um, I don't know. I just didn't know what I wanted. And it was definitely, yeah, like a turning point, like something in me snapped and just said like, no, I'm going to prove everyone wrong and I'm going to do something. Like I'm going to be, everyone's saying that I'm not like her and that I can't be like her. I'm going to, I may not be able to get into Yale, which didn't even apply, but um, I will still like, you know, try to try to do the best that I can and be the best person that I can be type of thing. And I don't know that perfectionism just got out of hand and <laughs> turned into something crazy but yeah <laughs> okay so that's that's interesting so after that point so i guess in your sophomore junior and senior year um did you um i guess like what does it what did it take to uh or what did it look like i guess um trying to trying to reach that level um, so what I had to do basically when, I, cause I was gone for half a year. So like, I think the end of my 10th grade year, I had to take like all of my classes, I guess, virtually mm -hmm. I had to finish them that way. And then when I came back, I just had to like recover from everything. I had to like go full speed ahead, um, retake that English class doing like adult school at night. Um, just do everything in my power to take all the AP classes, AP bio, AP Spanish, everything, and just wow. try to like get like my GPA up. And it was, I was just like laser focused. Like that was my, my mission now is to like, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go to a good school that has the DPD program. I'm going to be a dietitian. Like nothing else mattered. That was it. <laughs> and so I, I was just, that became like my, my main focus. So that's, that's pretty much all I have for that. Really? That is really interesting because how, did you enjoy kind of learning about those topics like the bio and um oh yeah yeah i i hated uh actually 
So Gardena High School was not the best school. Um, it was, uh, I didn't learn anything in chemistry, 100%. We had an amazing AP biology teacher, the one of the best teachers there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still there, but his name was Dr. El Sharafa. We called him Dr. E. He was amazing and I loved it. I love biology. As soon as we would get like a project, I'd be like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna do this? I'm going to Michael's tonight. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna build the, the cell, the cell, um, with the cell, the plant cell. What am I gonna use for the mitochondria? It's gonna be it's gonna be clay. Let me get started. Like I would be obsessed and just wanna like just like I was just not even listening to the class anymore. I'm just trying to like you know like I like people would be trying to talk to me during class and be like quiet. I'm trying to I'm mapping this out. Leave me alone. <laughs> so that that that's the type of you know person that I was when it came to like biology and not so much chemistry because like I said that that teacher like lit something on fire and we honestly got points by like raising our hand. Like there was this kid that would get points in class for like raising his hand and saying like, you're looking sharp today, Mr. Johnson. And that's how he passed the class. What? Uh, yes, yes. So that was like a lot of our classes too. Um, the only time that I ever got sent to the Dean was an AP Spanish um, language. Was it AP? No, it was just for native speakers. It was like my first, I was in ninth grade. And she sent me to the classroom because I had on like, um, purple and black striped leggings and she said I was a witch because her cell phone was running and I, it was ringing when it was off and the posters behind her kept falling every time that I looked at her so what that's, how, <laughs> that's totally unrelated but I'm just trying to give you like an understanding of you know what my school was like and it was you know not very many teachers you know prepared us well for college just doctory was amazing and definitely you know helped to foster my love for biology and the biological sciences okay that well, thank you um uh, uh, mr e um okay so you so you have like out of like the general four subjects you just you would say like science would be kind of like your favorite topic yes mm -hmm. okay interesting okay and then so so um i guess fast forward um and how did, did you um were able to do well on those ap classes i guess ap tests as well yes i did do good on the ap tests and the ap classes um the only thing i'm terrible like very terrible at is math um <laughs> i didn't <laughs> even try <laughs> to take any ap classes for that i was just like let me just pass the regular ones and i'll be okay that that'll be fine with me um which i did but you know i i still didn't get a's i, I definitely got a b <laughs> in the math <laughs> classes That's... um but yeah Okay. It's not my thing. Okay. So so fast forward to I guess senior to your senior year when you're applying to those colleges, like, I guess how were you uh, how were you then? How were you feeling? What what kind of places were you thinking about um and stuff like that? Um I kind of just wanted to leave. Um I wanted to even go like to New York. Mm -hmm. I didn't apply though. Um, I don't remember why. I think, again, because, like, uh, that was kind of, like, initially, you know, when everyone's, like, dreaming of the schools they want to go to, I was like, NYU, like, I just want to leave, like, I don't want my parents to be visiting me and stuff, um, but I didn't apply there because I was just looking at, like, in-state, and then also my parents also said, we're not going to pay if you go out of state, you're going to have to figure that out on your own because you have an eating disorder and we need to check up on you, and I was like, dang, so I have to, I guess I have to stay in California, and so that's also why I stayed in California. But um, yeah, so there you go. I was still very much, um, I had pretty much relapsed at that point um, when it was around time for, for applying to schools. I was very low weight again. I was doing all the things, kind of like, like evolved. My eating disorder, I guess, evolved to a place where I could be a little bit more stable and kind of fly under the radar. So I was like kind of still functioning, but not really. Um, but yeah, so when I was applying to schools, again, just going through the eatright.org website um, and then just like looking at who had the the DPD um, certified by Ascend. And uh, I just literally sent out all my applications to all of those schools and just, oh, I didn't really have any expectation. I didn't think I was going to get into Berkeley. I was just like, whatever, why not? Uh, I mean, actually, um, who rejected me? Loma Linda, or no, not Loma Linda, LMU, Pepperdine rejected me. Um, I think the first one that I got into was, honestly, I think it was the, no, it was CSU Chico. And then after mm. Chico, it was, 
I think Davis and Merced, those accepted me. I don't remember if I... Fresno accepted me. And Long Beach actually said, hey, there's something wrong with your application. I think it was like my middle name or something. And I tried to correct it. And then I, I don't know what happened with Long Beach, but I did apply to Long Beach undergraduate and something happened. And I have no idea. I was just like, what? But by that time I had already been accepted to Berkeley and I was like, well, <laughs> I'm going there. Uh, so yeah, that, that was my mindset. I just really didn't know what I was doing. I was just, let's see what happens. Okay. So then you, you go into Berkeley and how was, how was that experience? The Berkeley experience? It was crazy. It was intense, <laughs> but because of the fact that, like I said, I was very ill prepared. I did not know what I was getting into. And they kind of like, I, so a part of, I will mention this part of my admission was contingent on the fact that I attended summer bridge. Um, I, that's basically like a program where like, you have to take like two courses or something like that, like a couple courses. So just so that you can get a taste of what it's like, um, to take classes there, I guess. So they gave me like this, this introductory, like, a cause I bombed in the math, the math portion. Hmm. So they gave me like an introductory course to math. And literally I spent like probably 10 hours in that, like, like, what is it called? Like, it was not office hours, but it, it, it's like with the graduate students, like they would try to help you. It was the worst semester of my life there. It was so intense. I cried so much. It was so hard. And then I forgot what other class I took, but all I remember is that class. That's how bad it was. <laughs> it was so hard. And that literally made me spiral back into, and I was alone, like, it, and no one was there to like, tell me that I couldn't do all these things that I wanted to do to cope with, like, the stress that I was under and I just hit a new low so my parents came down and they're like they saw me and they're like nope and they took me back and I was still 17 so I couldn't say no and they took me back and they put me back in that eating disorder facility so that was my second relapse mm. wow and and um <clears throat> wow okay so then um so that was in your first year at Berkeley? First semester. The fall semester hadn't even started. So I was doing what I had to do oh, okay. to meet the requirements for me to get in. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're like, you're going to have to do this summer program. And I ended up passing those classes, but it, it literally made me spiral back into my eating disorder. So I had to defer the fall semester, and that literally devastated me because... I don't know how it is like for undergraduate in Long Beach, but for Berkeley, it's like everything is mapped out. Like everything is mapped mm -hmm. out. They only offer certain courses, certain semesters for you to graduate on time. And it's like, you gotta, you gotta just do it. You just gotta do it perfectly and you'll be good. If not, you're going to be all like left behind and messed up. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, it was rough because I had to defer the semester and I had to just play catch up the rest of my undergraduate career. Literally. I had to go to Northridge. I think it was like my second year for summer to take a bio class. And I just had to like, I hate, I, I dread typing in the website assist.org now, like just trying to find places where I could match things that, so that I could be okay, you know, um, to, to transfer credits. So I took bio and the lab at Northridge and took some random accounting class that I needed in at Santa Monica college online and just always just always being at school during the summers just to try to you know make things work okay wow so okay i guess i want to touch back a little bit i guess a little bit back into high school because i wanted i guess um see a little bit on the um your experience i guess so you were dealing with the eating disorder at at the um the facility and so I guess like interesting. I mean, I I it seems like a very hard to balance that like journey through the through trying to get better through the eating disorder versus like all this these other responsibilities that you have in life. Like Yeah. So you mean go ahead, sorry. Oh no, that I that's pretty much it. Yeah, so with with both times that I was in all together it was like a year in treatment. Um but the first time that I was in in high school, definitely it was very hard because 
yeah, you're trying to combat, like, all these, like, I mean, basically, like, fight, you know, your mental, the mental illness that you're struggling with, and um, also try to stay on top of your schoolwork. Um, but, you know, it's the same thing as if you're not in treatment. It's, you're either, it consumes your life. It literally consumes your life. So everything comes second to the disorder. So being in treatment is actually great because it helps you learn to, you know, slowly put it on the back burner and then eventually, you know, master the thoughts over it so that it's not in your life anymore. But when you're immersed into it um, and, you know, different things trigger it for different people. But for me, it was just feeling like everything when, when I felt like everything was out of my control, like everything was just not going the way that I wanted it to be. It was like, no, like, stop, like, I need something that I can have consistent and complete control over in my life. And for some reason, it just manifested in, I guess, my weight and control over my food. Um, so, yeah. So when, when, when you're, when you're actively engaging in your eating disorder, that's kind of, it takes up more of your time, if that makes sense, because mm. everything just, just becomes, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the only thing that matters is this thing. Forget about friendships, forget about like, I guess, yeah, school's important, but like, you just can't function until you do the things that your brain or your eating disorder tells you that you have to do on a daily basis. You just, you just cannot function without that. And then once that's completed or done and the voice is kind of like quiet, like I call it the eating disorder voices. No, it's not real voices. Don't think that I'm hearing voices, <laughs> but like the, the thoughts is what I want to say when those voices and those thoughts kind of simmer down because you've done whatever it is that it tells you that, that, that you have, feel like you have to do, then you can focus on your life. Then you're like allowed to do the things that you have to do. So it's actually a lot better once you're out of treatment and you know, you've had like the tools to be able to forget about those things because you're able to function. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, wow but you know i i only have so much like you know admiration for the person that has to you know fight through that um through that journey um you know for you to be able to um for every time to go through it and like do what you have to do to take care of yourself um each time i mean that just seems like such a such a battle but for you to over you know to have overcome or gotten through it twice it's um quite amazing thank you yeah, yeah it's not easy but definitely worth it mm -hmm. okay so then so that doesn't seem to be the the best start to to the to berkeley um so after that first year trying to catch up um and you say it kind of, that was kind of a common theme throughout your whole berkeley experience just trying to um just trying to catch up yep and like no recovery is perfect so even after my second time in treatment would you believe that i still struggled with it <laughs> i was still struggling the whole time um yeah so but yeah constantly trying to catch up uh, just trying to uh, make sure that you know my grades were decent um had to have a 3.1 to even uh, clean, you know, declare your major, your, by the end of your second year, you had to have that. Otherwise, sorry, you can't get into dietetics type of thing. Um, so yes, I did whatever it took to get that. And like I said, still struggling with that stuff. Eating disorder was still pretty much top of the list. Um, it wasn't until afterwards, but yeah, like it, it wasn't until like I took a break after uh, completing my undergraduate. I said, like, you know what, I want to be a dietitian, but can I? Can I, the way that I'm still thinking, can I, can I actually help people? No, I'm, I'm not in a place to help anyone. Um, so I made a very difficult decision, but I, like, I had to be able to just beat this once and for all. So it took me a long time, but definitely, like I said, it's, like a conscious decision and it's a hard decision but it's something that like you have to decide within yourself that you want no one can do it for you no one can make that decision for you i was placed into these uh treatment facilities uh against my will because i was an un uh, not an undergraduate i was a minor but 
the decision has to come from you and that's when you'll actually change. So it wasn't until, and it wasn't until after I graduated that I was like, okay, I'm going to beat this thing for real. Graduated college or? Oh yeah. Graduated college. So okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, like, like we kind of mentioned, yeah, like, <clears throat> like that's not easy. Um, it's something that, even with the the two treatments that you had, you know, it's still there, and 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 it's a battle every morning, every every night, like just throughout. You know, it's just something that you just have to wrestle with. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's taking me a, <clears throat> a little bit because, like, I you know, I've also come through like. N nothing like that but like I, I i've struggled with mental mental uh, mental health as well and so i know that you know to kind of battle trying to battle your thoughts trying to um you know just try to help yourself and and get yourself straight before you can you know be anywhere close to productive in 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 the outside world um it's tough and I, I just applaud anyone's effort to really try to to master themselves and and um, s despite all that, still try to be the best person that they can be. Exactly. Yes, and I don't think it's talked about enough. Like I feel like it's come to light more um, in the recent years, but uh, there's so many people that struggle with it and you know don't don't even tell anyone and it's it's just very sad. Like I I want people to be able to feel like they can go and get help when they need it and yeah especially in my situation it was very difficult because it's like yo like I, I went into this field because I was passionate about it but this is the roadblock and if I really want to do this I have to figure out a way to like beat this and um yeah like it, it was it's like a muscle you know like your coping mechanisms are a muscle I just had to keep using it and using it and getting it stronger so that I could, you know, eventually not have to struggle with it. And I'm just like, so happy that to this day, it's been like five years that I've, you know, been in like recovery. So it's, it's not even a thing in my life anymore. And it's a huge, huge um, accomplishment and something that I'm very proud of. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm really happy um, to, to hear that because I, behind all, behind that, you know, is, is all the hard work that you put in. To yourself and and that's just it just deserves so much um you deserve so much credit and praise for for that thank you <laughs> so so i guess to, to go back a little bit on the timeline so after you graduated from berkeley you took a little bit of time off is that yes okay mm -hmm. so to, to work on yourself and then and then so you so when did you i guess what was the time frame when you felt that it was like time to to re-pursue dietetics uh let's see um i would say around like somewhere in 2019 so i graduated in 2015 um i was pretty much just working um yeah for about four years i just i got experience and i tried to keep it relevant started mm -hmm. off easy food service was a sushi chef i started off as a waitress but I wasn't quote unquote loud enough. So they put me in the kitchen and um, yeah, then they're like, okay, um, get out of the kitchen. We're short staffed, go do rolls. And I'm like, I've never rolled sushi roll in my life. What do you... And so, okay, I'm rolling rolls now. And now I'm like the leader of the roll thing. And then they're like, okay, we're short on people to do the nigiri. So go do the nigiri. And I'm like, okay, I don't know how to do this. They're going to laugh at me because it looks terrible. But now I'm doing that okay, do you want to learn how to do the masago? Do you want to learn how to, to cut the fish? And I'm like, okay. So here we are, <laughs> cutting fish and doing sushi. All right, and then after that, I went from food service to, uh, what did I do? I was working at GNC for a little bit and just kind of like, you know, dealing with supplements, dealing with customers um, and kind of like just, I, I really didn't like it. I mean, it was great that I got to talk to people, but it was more sales focused. And I was more of like, okay, well, this isn't really going to help them. They want me to sell them this, but you know, what's actually going to help you is like changing your lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, that doesn't make sales. And I'm like, okay, well, this is not really going to help them, but you know, 
So, you know, got a little bit more of like that, you know, customer, I guess, experience and just being able to like, you know, even just nutrition education, even though I wasn't supposed to be educating them, just nutrition education. <laughs> um, and from there, is that the only two jobs that I've had? I think so. Yeah, I spent a lot of time like uh, in sushi and in GNC. So uh, after that, I got the job well, during the pandemic. I got the job at uh, the eating disorder facility. That was, oh, but before that, sorry, in 2019, September 2019, I was like, okay, I need to do something with my bachelor's. So I went and got the DTR license. I studied for the test, mm. passed the test. And I'm like, yay, now I'm a DTR. Let me try to get a job as somewhere as a dietetic technician. Didn't get a like specific dietetic technician job, but um, I got the job as like a diet aide, which I mean, basically the same thing. But um, so now I'm just like, you know, like working under the RD at uh, one of the residential facilities for adults. Same, same um, hospital, but like a residential house. So, you know, I'm just there doing all the diet aid stuff, cooking the food, uh, helping with the meal plans, running uh, groups. Um, and now we're very short staff. So I'm also working as like uh, mental health worker staff. So I'm very involved with the patients. Um, yeah. And now like during, I guess the light bulb switched on in my head. Um, February of last year, uh, right before lockdown started, mm -hmm. I was like, I really want to go back to, I want to be a dietitian. I'm ready. I want to go back to grad school, like, uh, or start grad school. Um, yeah. And I just started the search and at first I was like, let me just do like an online cause you know, shut down. And I was like, I just want to do like an online thing. Like, and then I was like, no, if I'm going to already put in the effort, why don't I just, you know, do like, you know, like again, a certified program. So here I go applying for doing the die casting and I had no idea I had to reach out to all my undergraduate professors the DPD director I was like she's gonna think like oh my god this girl like years later like no <laughs> but I'll, but you know she was very nice I, I love her so much for all the all of them all of my DPD professors are amazing Mikkel um Mary and Kristen sorry this is why and Kristen they all really helped me out um they wrote letters of recommendation for me, even though it had been years. They're like, I was like, you, I was like, you probably don't remember me, but I need help. And they're like, we remember you. So that's the other great thing about nutrition is it was a tiny, tiny major. Our cohort was very small. So um, yeah, it, it worked out fine. Um, I was a little bit sad when I didn't match to the, um, what is it called? The combined program at Long Beach. That was my first choice, mm -hmm. by the way, Long Beach. Um, and um didn't match to anything that was a terrible day but also like in the back of my mind like I like I told you before I was like what next what do we have to do to get this done so I was like okay let's look at the ISPs so I applied to the Long Beach one the Pepperdine one a bunch of other ones like so many and I ended up getting into both of them and it just made sense to do the Long Beach one because I got into the grad school so I was like here we go go beach <laughs> that that is a that's a really um amazing story i wanted to circle back a little bit to the i guess we didn't really talk about too much on the berkeley dietetics program um did you <clears throat> um you mentioned they had you had some nice professors that kind of you know remembered you and helped you you know even years after you uh, graduated um but how was it kind of traveling through their diet you mentioned it was a small program very small there were two boys in my year and it's always that that's always the case though there was two boys and there was like maybe in my same year like i want to say 12 girls like we, we were tiny wow. and it was great it was it was so great and but it was very scary when we would go into like um i even forgot the names of the halls but like they're, they're in green somewhere in the back of my in my mind but like when we would take like the ochem, the biochem, like all that stuff, like when you would see all the pre-med students, <laughs> oh my goodness, we're like, where are my friends at? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was scary because yeah, we would be thrown in there and they'd be like throwing the curve off and we're like, yo, we're just trying to get into dietetics, like relax, please let us <laughs> have a chance. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was it was great because, you know, we all knew each other and we were um, uh, we were always like there to help each other out. I had a few like um, close friends in college that uh, 
didn't go into, I think I was like the only one that did like diet. Again, I didn't have very many friends because remember eating disorder came first. Um, <laughs> but sadly, but like the ones that, you know, did kind of understand were like either like in public health and they took some of the similar courses or they went like the dietetics, uh, molecular toxicology route. So they didn't do exactly what I was doing, but they were in a lot of the similar, similar classes as me. So they definitely like, you know, helped me out when I was struggling with like chemistry and um, all that stuff. Microbiology, I think was probably the worst one, even though I loved it. And I still remember a lot of the things to this day. Like I, I love learning about like uh, just viruses and stuff like that. It was always interesting, but it was just way too much information. And I was taking, you know, like cramming in hard classes together because I was behind. <laughs> So just way too much information for me to retain. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of my experience with microbiology. It's just um, <clears throat> I still think that was like one of the hardest classes I took in undergrad. Um, <clears throat> it was just I've never had a class <clears throat> that was all multiple choice, and I still dreaded it that much. <clears throat> right, there was no written answers, but it was still <clears throat> like they all sound the same. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I don't care. Like what? <clears throat> Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it was it was multiple choice, um, but it was still like just too much information. No, nope. I I <laughs> I agree, <clears throat> and especially I remember those tests. Like I hated the ones that had like, you know, A and B or B and D or it was just I never. It, but it, yeah, yeah. I literally saw a meme today that was like. When you look at the, it was, it was, um, what's his name from The Office? Oh my god, I can't remember his name. The main guy. Uh, I don't watch Office too much. Dwight, that's, no, no I love Dwight, um, but it's not him. He's the manager. No, it's not, it's no. not, I can't even remember his name. Dang it, it's gonna bother me. <laughs> Michael Scott, it's not Michael, it's not Kevin. Is it like the younger dude? Yes, it's the one who likes Pam. Oh. What is his name? <laughs> oh my god. I don't remember. Kevin? It's not Kevin. <laughs> Anyways, that guy. He was there and he was like, when you see the first, uh, he's like looking down, he's like, when you see the first question on the quiz and you realize in the next slide, it's like, when you realize you're gonna fail, he looks up and it's just like, yep. It's like, that moment of desperation where you're just like, oh man, it's gonna be a long hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I felt in some of those questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so that's cool. And then, um, did you think that the program um, prepared you well enough to, to to kind of go into your eventual internship? Yeah, I think that it was the way that it was just set up. Like I said, like I know a lot of programs have that where you're not supposed to or you can't declare the major unless you have like a 3.0. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. that's that's great because a lot of these programs, you know, require you to have a, even even higher, like a 3.5 sometimes for the internships. Um, so it's definitely great in that respect. And also like just like the the upperclassmen um classes like they all like taught you like okay this is how you do die -cast. of course i didn't retain I retain any of that information because i did it years later but like this is how you go through die -cast. this is what the, this is the difference with differences between all the types of internships this uh they made us create like a website for ourselves like a portfolio of all of our stuff they made us do i think for for long beach um for the graduate program they have you write like um either in your statement of purpose, you have to, you, you need to put your GRE scores or you can write, have like a writing sample. I chose to do the writing sample because I'm terrible at tests. Uh, and they also ended up waiving the GRE anyway. So I'm just like, great. But uh, I submitted a writing sample and it was actually my senior um, research evaluation project for Berkeley. So it was on brown mm. fat or like brown adipose tissue and like cooling, cooling systems, you know, focusing on like, you know, like cooling and like increasing like brown fat and you know that how that helps with like fat loss or whatever and basically my the conclusion like a 47 page paper the conclusion was like no this doesn't work like maybe like temporary results but no this doesn't work it's the 
you know, it's inconclusive evidence, but it, it looks like it's not going to, you know, amount to anything. So I really like that. So I'm actually looking forward to that in graduate school is being able to analyze research and be able to, you know, distinguish like whether or not a certain statement or a certain method or treatment for any type of condition is effective and whether or not it's, you know, something that we can implement for the treatment. Wait, so you wrote 46 pages? No. 47, but you yes, it also included like, it included <clears throat> like actual, like, you know, the work cited and all that stuff and like the, um, like the evidence analysis tables. So I would, you know, like cite like specific places and it was a lot of, you know, tables inside of that too. So like, I would say like the actual, you know, my writing was maybe about like 18 pages and a lot, the rest of it was like, you know, just extra stuff and analysis. That's, you know, I, I <clears throat> that's just unbelievably impressive just for me because, um, yeah, I just, I'm not that great of a writer. And so when I see people and their feats of writing, I'm just, I get mind blown every time. <laughs> I always tell people the only reason I got into Berkeley, my GPA was not Berkeley material. My SAT scores were not Berkeley material. The only reason I got into Berkeley was my personal statement. If you need me to write something and make an impression, I'll do that. But I, 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 I didn't have like the Berkeley grades or anything like that. Definitely not. Well, you definitely, you know, everyone has, has their strengths and yours definitely looks like writing. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a lot of grad school. So I'm sure you'll be able to put that into good use over there. Yes. Thank God. Please don't give me any more chemistry or like <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> Maybe, uh, they, we can put that behind us. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> let's see. So we were, okay. So then, wow. So interesting. I'm sorry, because the only thing that came to my mind is like, I wanted you to like, just share me that essay so I can just like, you know, work, like kind of just like see how I can work on my own writing, but I'm trying to focus on the next question. <laughs> Wait, I can, I can still give you like advice later if you want. Yeah. I mean, I'm open. I'm open ears to any advice because like, only God knows I need it. Um, okay. So when did you, um, when did you get the acceptance letter for the well, for the grad school and the ISB for the Long Beach? I guess the timeline of that. I was actually on Reddit because I was worried. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got on all of the all. I'm a very good investigator as well, so I got on all of the Reddit like for all the schools, um, San Jose, Chico. These are the ones that I applied to for graduate school. So San Jose, Chico, Northridge. Um, I think those were all of them. And then Long Beach, of course. Um, and of course, they're all the, there's mainly undergraduates. There's some graduates floating around. So like, I'm like, you know, like maybe twice, not twice a week, once every two weeks, I'd be like, hey, any graduates here of anything? But I know we all have different like deadlines and stuff like that and like acceptance times. And so most of them are like engineers or something like that. Um, so they're like, no, or someone like, yeah, I got mine. You should, you know, check back in a couple days. I don't remember exactly what day it was, but uh, I know that it was after April 5th, which was match day for the, um, for the, what you call it? For the internship, sorry, I'm blanking out. Mm -hmm. um, but the, it was around like, I guess the second week of April and it was a Friday, I remember that because mm -hmm. I was like, heading not how I was heading to work and I, I got like I didn't get the email I'm always like I'm that person that checks every day like as soon as I wake up and I check like the portal so the email came later so I already knew by the time that they emailed me but I was there checking the portal and I was like oh I was like what like no way like I actually got in I was like taking a screenshot sending it <laughs> to everyone I'm like does that say that I got in does that say <laughs> and they're like yes Elizabeth relax and I'm like okay just double checking um, and yeah, so I was really happy. I got the acceptance to the graduate school before, um, I got the acceptance to the ISPE and it's crazy because Chico accepted me literally two days after the deadline. And I was like, Oh, I didn't think I would actually get in. So I was kind of, they're like backups, right? I don't, not to say 
that one program is better than another. It's just Chico is up here and I'm down here. So, um, and I don't, I didn't want to travel all the way out there again. Uh, so same thing with San Jose, also a backup only because of the distance and Northridge is somewhat closer, but Long Beach is closer. Um, and yeah, I ended up getting into CSUN after I got into Long Beach. So I was like, I'm going to Long Beach anyway. <laughs> that was the first choice. Um, but yeah, I was very happy. And then I think the Friday, the next Friday, I, I was, or was it Monday? Mo the Monday after I found out that I got into Long Beach, I had the interview with Dustin for uh, the internship. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe a few days after, maybe it was also a Friday, I can't remember. Um, I He said that I had gotten in and I was like, yes, <laughs> this is working out perfectly. <laughs> Even though it didn't feel like it was going to work out at first, um, it's it worked out and I'm so grateful and so thankful and very, very, very excited. Oh. <laughs> congratulations <laughs> thank you that um that is very nice um you deserved it you had a you know a very long journey to that point but you know you were able to make the pieces work persevere through the hard times and you know get that acceptance letter so or acceptance uh, i guess message um mm -hmm. so that is super cool that's cool that you mentioned um well prof professor um professor more because i actually um like he was my well, I he would he was my favorite professor from Cal State Long Beach. Um, he was the one. It's, it's an interesting story, at least for for me and Professor Moore, is that the only re I think the only reason I got into nutrition was because of him. Was because uh, I took this like intro to nutrition class, and he just so happened to be the professor in that class when I, um, I guess was like a sophomore or junior, and. Uh, there's just something about him that made me admire the professional and and being introduced to the dietitian world. Um, so that's me and and my history with Professor Moore. So. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. I've only spoken with him a few times, like over Zoom or over the phone, I think. Um, but he's he's really cool. Like just um, I guess his personality. Um, I think what the, one of the questions, um, wait, I can't talk about that. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, never mind. Um, so yeah, no, he's just, he's just really cool. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to get to meet, uh, all of like just the other ISB core, core cohorts. And then also just the, the, gra uh, graduate cohort and I don't know, I really don't know what to expect, but I am just really excited to like just make connections with everyone um because everyone seems like and even with just like the graduate like orientation like mini pre-orientation with virginia gray and all the other graduate students um everyone seems really nice and like you know it would be like a very supportive um group of students so i'm super excited for all that cool i guess the my other question initially even when i was initially messaging you um was I didn't even know that combination existed about like having taking the masters and then having that is like did you know that interaction kind of worked out before you did that or, or is it... nope I didn't know uh again just doing whatever uh, uh, but like yeah I think a lot of this is uh learning as you go it's nice if you have someone that's like gone through it so they can tell you like oh this is what you have to do and oh you can also do this and please don't cry like when you don't get in uh there's other options uh i wish someone would have told me that i mean they did but like you know they hadn't gone through it so i was like but you don't understand but um yeah so there's um and i, I did end up talking to dustin in virginia so you can do both simultaneously and i'm like i mean why couldn't you like if there's a program that has both of them combined you know why why can't i do the isp and the graduate program i think i'm just gonna have to do part-time on on either one of them which one i haven't really decided i think it might be i might try to do a little bit part-time on the internship um actually i don't know i'm probably gonna take that back um and just like do a course i i just i'm i have low-key i don't want to do courses over the summer because i'm just like i'm so tired of that uh for graduate school <laughs> So I'm just, I'm really torn, but I really have to make a decision. 
before uh, the semester starts. Um, but but yeah, they said it's fine. Um, you know, you just have to, because that's like the cool part about ISPs is you can um, pretty much choose your own rotations when you want to start it, when you want to like, okay, I want like a, like a one week break or something, or you can, you know, choose where you want to do it, when you want to start it, like just map the whole thing out. So that's the cool part about them. Okay. So I, I guess I'm uh, to to go back a little bit on the on the application time. When was the the grad program um, applications due? I guess February fifteenth, the day after Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Oh, for so, Long Beach, for most of them actually. So they're the same as the the Dicus? because that seems like the same. Yes, Dicus was the same day, I think. Yes. The, so everything was like pretty much aligned. Uh, some of the graduate programs were a little bit later. Some of them were sooner. I think San Jose was due the 31st of January. Mm -hmm. um, dang, that's so long ago. But it felt like literally yesterday. <laughs> it was so stressful. <laughs> like no joke. It was so stressful. <laughs> Ugh, don't leave it to the last minute. Please don't. <laughs> um, yeah, it was very, very stressful. And like I said, like I had taken a big old break. I was by myself, like trying to figure all this out. Professors helped as much as they could, but they're also very busy. So I couldn't be bothering them all the time. Um, but yeah, I, it took a lot of just like, you know, trial and error, figuring stuff out, making calls all the time, calling all the schools all the time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something that you want to prepare for and take like piece by piece. Hmm. So, so you were applying to Dykus. Um, so, when you're applying for like the combined programs, you're applying for the grad program as well. Mm -hmm. But so, if they don't accept you for the combined program, do can they still accept you for like just the grad school? Like I'm. That's exactly what I didn't even know until a couple, like, maybe even, like, just a month ago. I uh -huh. had the same question. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> like, what? Like, okay, so if I don't get in, do I still have a chance? And I think I even emailed Virginia about that. And she's like, yeah, you can st still get in. And then, like, a week later, they're like, hey, email this person if you still want to be considered for just the master's. And I was like, okay, yes, please consider me. Um, so, yes, you can still get into just the – and same thing with CSUN. I got into CSUN. I still don't think I've told them that I'm not going – which should be on my to-do list. Um, but yeah, you can still get into the master's. Um, and you can actually just still do an internship um, without like without doing a master's too. So there's that, like I got into mm. the Pepperdine ISP as well and the Berkeley one, but I didn't end up going to Berkeley again because I wanted to stay closer and I had already got gotten into you know the graduate program here. That's that's like the trade off, and oftentimes like the 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 ISPs that are um, just ISPs, they want you to be full time. So it's like, do you want to do grad school first, or do you want to do, you know, become an RD first? And so I was like, but I want both. <laughs> <laughs> so it works out nice at Long Beach. Um, granted, you know, you'll finish faster if you do. It just depends on on what you really want. Um, but you know, I want both of them. So. <laughs> Okay, that's really cool. Um, okay, uh, that, that is good to know because uh, I also did not know that. So n seeing you um, and your experience with that definitely at least helps with, uh, you know, thinking about it. Um, yeah, yeah. So so I did mention, um, I guess to go into a little bit, like I did graduate from Cal State and 18 and then i guess i'm also i've also i guess taken a break um i think for the last pretty much like three years yeah three years and um yeah when you know i going back to that dykus thing i man like i am i have failed to put a proper um application through dykus i think twice i think this year and then the last year is when i actually was like okay you know what i should like just put in my application and like just see what happens but every time i just it's the personal statement i think it's the personal statement that always gets to me that i just cannot like uh conjure up like just a proper personal statement and just <sighs> the stress i just i feel the stress 
Yeah, those, those, not to brag, <laughs> but <laughs> those come pretty natural to me. But this one was still a challenge. Like it was a challenge. So I, I hear you on that. I, I, I'm good at it, but I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. it. I hate talking about myself. I hate writing about myself. Like it just, it's weird. And you don't know what exactly to say. You don't want to come off a certain way. Like just making it come off the way that you want it to sound and hitting all the points that you want to sound without going off on a tangent is very, very hard. So I completely understand that it's difficult. And you're just kind of like, well, what do they want to hear? And I've learned that like the best thing is to just like not think about that and just be like, who, who am I? Where do I want to go? And why, why am I pursuing this? This is why I'm pursuing this. And it's, it's not so much like, like trying to like sell yourself, but telling them like, this is who I am. This is what I want. And this is why I believe this is what I'll bring to the university. And this is why you'd be blessed to have me just kidding but <laughs> this is why <laughs> no this is this is why you know why you are essentially like just trying to get where you where, where, where I'm just like rambling now but you know what I'm saying it's just being able to express like exactly where you're coming from and what you want to do with with your with your degree with your career with your credential how you want to give back well, at least for me it was always like how I want to be able to give back to where I came from Okay. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, I, I, I could see that a little bit too, because you, um, you went back to that same facility to, to be that diet aid. So you have like to work with kind of similar populations that, you know, you were used to. So you have that kind of history with kind of going back to, you, to your roots a little bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely, okay. So when, when I was interviewed for it, you know, and they get to that question where, I always disclosed it too. I was like, Hey, so you might have me in your records. Um, so just so you know, I have had an eating disorder in the past, but I am fully recovered. Um, but you know, they go through the questions where they're like, okay, do you think that you would honestly be able to work here without, you know, becoming triggered or anything like that? And I honestly didn't know, but I, I felt pretty confident in the fact that, you know, I had been, in recovery for a while and you know not I mean at first things you know would kind of trigger me a little bit but never to act but you know over the years like it just it doesn't really I don't really identify with you know having those thoughts anymore or anything like that um like I said I've, I've just I've pretty much been able to kind of master the control over you know any of those thoughts so when it came to time to answer that question, I was like, um, yeah, I think, I think I'd be okay. And if I had, I, I do have a good support system at home and I have a whole new coping mechanism. So I think I'll be fine. And, you know, when I got into, you know, the position and started actually working, um, I just thought like just sitting there and like listening to them and, you know, sometimes just being able to see how they were feeling. I was like, that was me you know, that was me and just wanting to be able to like, let them know it's going to be okay. Of course, I can't tell them that like, I, I completely understand. I can't, I'll never be able to disclose that with them. Um, but you know, just, just doing everything in my power to let them know that it's, it's going to be okay. And that they will be able to get through this and being able to help them along with that is so rewarding in a way that I never thought that, you know, I, I knew it was going to be great and that's what I wanted to do, but it, I didn't know like how good it would feel. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, that you were able to, uh, to help, you know, and, and to, um, take the experiences that, that you had and, and apply it, um, you know, to do the best possible job you could do there. Um, it's interesting. So, I mean, I am just impressed. I, <laughs> I'm just impressed. Um, you know where you're at, like right now. Um, it seems like you've, you're just a great, like, you know, 
Long Beach are, is lucky to have had you, you know, come aboard their two programs, the ISB and, and the graduate program. It seems like you've invested a lot in yourself to to build, you know, the skills that you've had. Um, you know, your writing skill is going to be so useful in, in, in the graduate program. Um, you know, the time that you put into kind of... Um, to make sure that your your mind and and is is in the right place so that you can you know be in a position to do well in 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 these two programs like that um it just seems like you're just I I could see it like the future the next uh, couple of years you're gonna be doing great so that yeah is... I'm excited thank you yeah um I I have to put it a little bit so going I have to ask about the sushi. Because that was uh, <laughs> I I didn't mention it, but I, I that is um I don't know what it is about that when you were mentioning about the sushi, it's just do do you um what is your overall thought about working there? I guess the uh, conclusion. Oh my goodness. Um, my overall thought. <laughs> It's an intense, like, first job. Well, it's not my first job, but, like, I guess, like, first, like, real kind of full-time job-ish. Mm -hmm. um, it's intense, dude. Like, it, 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 like, prepares you to just think on your feet, work fast, just, and, oh, my gosh, like, talk about put your serve safe, you know, skills to, to the test. You're working with raw fish. Mm -hmm. and there's like raw chicken in the fridge all the time and just being like why are these why is the chicken at the top who put this chicken up here um can we please put the vegetables up why is it not you know like first in first out type of thing why is there no label on this um it really you know tests like a lot of things and just your ability to work under pressure also i had to learn like some words in japanese um <laughs> You know, it was it was great. I loved like being able to, you know, and I, I still remember some of those words. But don't ask me to speak Japanese because I don't <laughs> like be able to like make a full sentence. I'll just be able to say like chotomate, like wait wait a minute type of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, and some of like you know the fish names um, or sushi roll names. But um, yeah, it, it was actually a really fun. Um, now i mean i i can i can make sushi if i if i need to um i just need like i guess like to make the rice ahead of time but that's like one thing i can say i can i know how to make that's like interesting the rice um, yeah because <laughs> that, that i mean to get the rice the right consistency it needs to be like done overnight right oh. so yeah yeah like i like they it would be a problem like if someone didn't prepare the rice overnight um, they'd be like, who messed up? Now we have no rice for the whole day type of thing. So, yeah. That is super interesting. Because my, my first job was actually at a pokey place making, like, Ooh. poke bowls. So, I, you know, there was a bunch of raw fish in, in the back. And, uh, yeah, it was it, it was during the time when I was still, I think, in my last year in undergrad. Um. And so, you know, when you, when we were learning all those, you know, the kitchen and, and you, just all the, the rules that came with it, um, yeah, I was just like, wow, like, this place um, could use a lot of work. <laughs> yup, the health inspector would come and every single time we'd have to beg him to come back because we would not get a good score. <laughs> and so I was like, I told you guys, like, you if you would have just done things right, this wouldn't be an issue, but nobody wants to listen to me. And also, like, the whole the one thing that did really, like, kind of alarm me is that, you know, a lot of the times allergies weren't taken seriously. Um, mm. Or, you know, I mean, they were, like, we had, like, separate utensils, but, like, people wouldn't really, I guess, like use they, they would just use whatever so it's like hey this is supposed to be like the the non like shellfish like station or whatever or this is supposed to be like just the vegetarian knife this is the vegetarian boards um stuff like that or like um you know if someone was like hey like i don't um i don't want like sesame seeds um i would take it seriously because it's like well what if they have diverticulitis and you know they're not supposed to be having that type of stuff and one customer actually told me that too he's like sorry i know i always ask for no sesame seeds but it's because i have a medical condition and i was like oh you like is it i didn't i didn't ask him if it was diverticulitis but he ended up telling it to me i was like 
oh wow do you, like do you mind like telling me you know what it is and he was like i knew it it was different like this. <laughs> but he was a regular he was a regular customer so we were already like kind of like you know cool mm-hmm. um so he um he ended up sharing that with me and i was like i never minded you know like not doing it but um it was just kind of cool to like be able to like try to figure out you know why somebody didn't want something true and i guess there was a you know that's interesting you mentioned earlier you were like a really good investigator as well um you know when i was going you guys had like the m&t classes at at the berkeley and you did you guys also do like case studies as well in that class mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did, how was your experience with that because i i felt a lot of like when i was doing it like a lot of detective work it felt like very much like detective work mm-hmm. it's like hmm okay these labs are like this okay the signs and symptoms are this uh and then like once you kind of figure out like okay this is what's going on like doing the pes statement it's like okay so i can use this one and this one so all of these kind of like um i guess diagnosis could work but i guess just trying to find the one that like made the most sense um was always like a challenge for me so it was it was it wasn't hard to try to figure out like what it actually was, but I was just like, which one is the right like diagnosis? Um, I would always get like tripped up about that. So, and then like my professor's always like, well, there's a multiple that you can use that are still right. But um, you know, me, I always just wanted to like get it exactly right. <laughs> and um, but yeah, it's like doing, you know, like case studies is, is a lot of like, just like detective work kind of, cause you're just trying to like pinpoint exactly what it is. Um, you know, and what's the best treatment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, and then just to um, go back from the, we talked about it really early, the type of dietitian you wanted, you said that, you know, you did want to like experience like a bunch of different settings. Um, But is it, um, is it in the clinical side that you ultimately wanted to kind of like end up on eat like ed clinical kind of thing yes um clinical would probably be something that i did want to do long term but now i'm also kind of thinking about sports nutrition um i guess like my rotations might ultimately like influence what i want to do uh, long term but uh clinical does seem like um something that i have been interested in like for the majority of the time that I've done, you know, or been in uh, dietetics. So like undergrad, I I was like, yeah, I want to work in uh, clinical rotations or not clinical rotations, but a clinical setting. Sorry, rotations are on my mind. I'm like trying to find all of them right now. That's the only downside to ISPE. I mean, you do get to choose where you want to go, but it's also like, I want to get the, you don't have to get them all, but I do. (laughs) (laughs) You don't have to have them all lined up uh, before you start, but like, I'm just, I can't stop thinking about them. Anyways, so I, clinical setting, yes. But I, um, there, there's the option to like, you know, do like a sports nutrition rotation. So I want to kind of see how I feel about that. Cause I am, uh, you know, into like, you know, um, like being active and, you know, weightlifting and all that. That's, that's a pretty big part of my life too. It's, um, you know, what kind of has, uh, it's like what gives me, I guess, clarity and kind of brings me um you know that that release stress relief so definitely interested in that okay that's cool you know i had to check back really quickly back to the page that i initially saw you you had like a small fun fact about dancing can you tell us a little bit about that yes so i i don't know why i got interested in swing um I don't know. I guess I was just like, that was like one of my phases in high school was like, you know, ska and then swing dancing. Um, so I don't know how I found this like swing dance teacher in <laughs> Marina del Rey or was it El Segundo? I think we learned in El Segundo and then I went to like, like the swing clubs in Marina del Rey. I was the only 15 year old there. <laughs> Everyone else was like in their forties and up. And I was like, I was there with my dad. Like my dad would drive me, man, my dad is awesome. He would drive me to Marina Del Rey, like almost every, oh, what was it? Tuesday or something. Um, he would drive me there and just like, let me dance with like all these people. <laughs> um, but it was swing dancing. So it was, it was so fun. And I remember there was this one like guy, like he was, he was older and he was like my height and pretty much we were just like like 
we would be going all over the, the floor, just like <laughs> showing up all these other people. We were going and we everyone was like, dang. And they had live bands and it was just so amazing. So that's how I learned. And then I got to Cal and I'm like, what? There's a swing dance? Like, and they just dance on Sprout Plaza, like the upper Sprout. They just dance right where the, you know, the gate is. Mm. They're just dancing there like every Saturday morning. And I was like, yeah, I'm there. And, so, <laughs> and then I also joined, I think my first semester. So it was like spring or was it the second? I don't know. But I joined, um, oh my gosh, Berkeley is amazing because it also has, I don't know if any other uh, colleges have this, but they have like these things called decals. So they're run by students and the students pretty much make up whatever they want. And they just count as like a pass, no pass credit just to kind of fill up credits or uh, units for the uh, semester. Mm -hmm. There was a swing one <laughs> and yes, I took it. And uh, uh, it was so much fun. You literally just get to dance. And if you dance, you pass like, you know, <laughs> so it was great. I enjoyed it and made a lot of friends there. And I went to some of the swing nights as well. And it was just so awesome. Just something about like live, like band music like that. It was just, I think that definitely like helped me stay sane my first semesters there. And I, I, I kept going back, like, you know, but I did get kind of busy. So I stopped like, you know, going to dance Saturday mornings, but it was, it was always just nice to like, even hear the music in passing. It just kind of made me happy because it reminded me of, you know, just dancing with that old man and and Marina Telray. <laughs> uh, that was great. Well, that that is a super cool story. A very fun story. Um, you know, it's a very. Yeah, I could see you're very, you know, happy when you're there, passionate, you know, about the dancing. Um, you should uh, you should see what where where this where the swing people are in Long Beach. Oh my gosh! Swing dance. I still remember. I mean, it's it's. It's kind of like riding a bike, you know, like it's still there. Like, I, I think I went back like not too long ago to, to one of like a, like a swing event, but, um, that'd be awesome. If they had it, I would totally not be able to resist going <laughs> to one. Yeah, definitely be, be, uh, be the one to start it if there isn't. And then, uh, you'll have that, uh, you know, you'll attract all the young people for a new generation of, uh, people that that will uh, get inspired by it definitely <laughs> okay so uh yeah it's been an hour and i think we've gone through you know a decent amount uh in that hour um ah uh, you know the one thing i really like about these things is because i i like to do them it would be even more interesting when they're in a i guess in a transition point in someone's life I guess like right now you're just going into that program and it's the beginning and you know you've given your thoughts on uh you know what you hope it to be like um what you're excited about and it is my hope that uh that in a couple of years when you eventually pass and become a dietitian somehow I can get you back on here interview again <laughs> ask you kind of the same thing how was your experience? Um, what were the things you remembered? What were the hard parts? Um, and, uh, you know, it'd be really cool to touch back like that. The update, definitely. <laughs> definitely down for the update, part two. Um, yeah, just, you know, keep in touch. I'm also here to help out. I know diecast is scary. I know applying for everything is scary. So it's cool to have someone that's been through it. Um, I did have, I forgot to mention that. I did have a couple of like friends of friends who you know were are now dietitians or were dietitians when I was applying so they'd been through the whole process and they're like just trying to help me out you know like oh this is you know how you do that or whatever it does get confusing there's a lot of weird little steps everywhere so um if you ever have any questions or have anyone who needs any help with anything um I'll I'm happy to help in any way I can um because I know it is very stressful and very frustrating <laughs> well that that would be uh definitely very helpful if um if i ever do have any questions um you um you know seem very uh you know with you calling um just like i just i see this you know you're a person that just really wants to just really wants it you know the the effort that you put into getting the applications together and you know i think the whole calling thing like just the the part about the distance thing is just like the whole calling and just really widening your net to try to 
capture those rotations that you need. Um, you know, that's, I think that takes a, a special type of person. Yes. Someone <laughs> who has been through that situation of just trying to figure out how do I get this done? Where do I need to go? Who do I need to call? Just, I've been doing that all my life. Why not do it again? Like, <laughs> that's, that's all it's ever been is try to figure out how do I get this done? So I'm not new to that. And I think it, uh, it's serving you well, <laughs> at least. I, I mean, I know that you don't have all the rotations set, but with your current mindset, with your current uh, uh, perseverance, I know you're going to go. You're going to be Thank getting you. it. <laughs> and they're going to love you because you're amazing. So. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming on here. Thank you for you know doing this hour and 20 minutes now. Um, it's been amazing hearing your story. Um, I've learned a lot. Um, mostly, I've just been in awe at, of your um, just at your effort. And I just I don't know how to explain it. Just your effort and your perseverance and how much effort. I, the one thing that really stands out to me is really just um, is the part where you worked so much like on yourself, like that parts um is the one that really like i resonate with um a lot um because it's not easy to to get to a point like where you can be you know productive and 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 can focus on other things other than than you know those certain thoughts that do pop up so that is the coolest thing um and uh but yeah thank you so much for for coming on here and i really really hope uh, I can get you back on here to to hear of your of your future experiences. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be on here. It was a pleasure to be on your podcast. And of course, like I said, always always here to help. And you'll definitely be able to get an update um, interview with me. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to share all that. All right. To all the rest of you that stayed and watched this podcast, I thank you guys so much. I hope you guys were able to take away something from here. Um, and uh, well, the one takeaway is just the amazing story of Elizabeth here. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye. Bye.